Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen thank, thank you for attending and taking the time for the championship to pay our respects to a true stalwart of the championship. On the 1st of September, we lost a true giant in all, in all manner of descriptions. A man whose name was given to his team and the team have gone on to become the most successful team in the history of the championship. As well as being a team owner, Paul Bird was also a father. And to Lexi, to Jordan and to Frank Jr, on behalf of the entire British Superbike Championship community, our thoughts are with you and to the team. As we begin to come to terms and to pay respects to this great man, I could think of no better person to talk about the era, the person, than the man who has been the soundtrack to all our lives. I hand over to Mr. Fred Clark. Thank you, Stuart. Two weeks ago, 56-year-old Paul Bird, owner of the most successful team in the history of British Super Bikes, passed away following a short illness. In response to the sad news, tributes poured in expressing condolences along with heartfelt words of appreciation, gratitude and respect for the man who had over so many years given his all to the sport we love. One of those tributes was from Andy Smith, former Vice President of Yamaha Europe. It was poignant and encapsulated the traits of his late friend. He wrote, never a dull moment, never a standard answer, never trying to please everyone, always speaking from the heart. Words that instantly identify the Birdman to anyone who ever had the pleasure of knowing him and a fitting epitaph. With Paul's passing, the paddock will never be the same again, but what a journey it's been. For the man the press liked to describe as the Cumbrian chicken farmer, in reality, the Cumbrian Express would probably have been more accurate. Today, we who are Paul's colleagues and friends within the British Superbike community have assembled to join with the members of Paul's family, the PBM team personnel, trackside race fans, plus those listening in via BSB radio, to collectively remember Birdie and say farewell to the man who can rightly be acclaimed a true legend. His achievements via Paul Bird Motorsport team stand alone and will surely never be matched. British Supersport British Stock 1000, National Stock 600, and National 250 champions, two-time winners at Daytona, four times Isle of Man TT victors, plus multi-Northwest 200 and Macau Grand Prix wins, World Superbike and MotoGP CRT race winners, and point scorers in 125, 250, and 500 Grand Prix. And currently, eight times British Superbike champions. Now, less impressive is the role of uh, roll call of riders who have uh, proudly worn the PBM team colours. It reads like a who's who of racing and includes John McGuinness, James Tosland, Sean Emmett, Steve Hislop, Stuart Easton, Jamie McWilliams, Michael Laverty, Brock Parks, Tom Sykes, James Ellison, Christian Eden, Andrew Irwin, Jonathan Ray, Michael Rutter, Joey Dunlop, Keith Farmer, Ian Hutchinson, Michael Donlop, Shane Byrne, uh, Scott Redding, Josh Brooks, and currently Tommy Bridewell and Glenn Irwin. But let us also remember that Paul was a father to three wonderful children who each in their own way have proven to be a real chip off the block. Daughter Lexi, at just 15 years of age, celebrating her birthday just a couple of days ago. The youngest has shown to be an expert in both go-kart and youth motocross. And 24-year-old twins, Jordan and Frank Jr. Jordan, always present at the race meetings and very much involved in the team administration. And Frank Jr., who is one of this country's hottest young talents in the world of four wheels, having graduated through the Ginetta Junior Championship to racing with distinction in the Asian Le Mans Series and currently World GT Challenge Series. He has also contested the Monza round of the World Rally Championships last year. To say they were Paul's pride and joy, would be to grossly understate the case. To Lexi, Jordan, Frank Jr., Frank Sr., Paul's father, and all of Paul's family, I say, we, 
of the British supermarket community share in your loss. A number of years back, Birdie invited myself and Baldrick, my assistant at the time, to join the team for an evening meal in what was then a considerably more modest hospitality unit than the one today. 20 plus years later, I was still being fed and watered and enjoying the PBM hospitality. Boy, have we put some chicken away over those years. <laughs> Being in the company of the boss almost every race weekend gave me the opportunity to know better the man behind the name. Foremost is that for someone who has, was to become the most successful team owner ever in British racing, as well as one of the most influential, there was no conceit about the man whatsoever. In fact, quite the opposite. In conversation, Birdie would invariably undersell his position as a leading player within the paddock. Equally, there was no disguising Paul's passion for racing and for his team, nor how focused, determined and driven he was that PBM should always endeavour to be the best, look the best and act the best, which meant, of course, winning races and with it, championships. And in so doing, Paul Bird Motorsport would set the be benchmark for others to aspire to. As uh, his most successful uh, rider said, that was Shane Byrne, said uh, Paul needed the paddock as much as the paddock needed Paul. It was a two-way deal. Yes, the boss man could be outspoken if the situation merited it and was never one to mince his words. He would always tell it exactly as he saw it, which in reality was no bad thing as you always knew where you stood. I recall one time back in the rapid solicitor's Kawasaki days, I'd noticed that the green paint colour was somewhat darker than the preceding seasons. Without thinking, I said, Think I prefer the previous colour, Birdie. His instant reply, well, that's your, that's your problem then, Fred, not mine. Never one to rest on his laurels, the boss was ever alert as to what was happening within the paddock, particularly in identifying the strengths and weaknesses of every superbike rider, whilst simultaneously keeping an eye on the support classes for any emerging talent. And whilst he didn't shout about it, Birdie would often extend a helping hand to a rider or two who was on the way up. I can still remember back in 2004, he was providing assistance to an 11-year-old who was racing a Metrokit 50cc machine. His name? Scott Redding. Birdie was indeed gregarious and loved being part of the paddock social life. I ask you, what other team owner would go with half a dozen or so of his mates to the, circuit, to the circuit bar at the end of day's racing to mix and have a laugh with the spectators and fans? Of his other achievements, and he was certainly multi-talented, I remember my former colleague, Larry Carter, who uh, has not only been the PBM team press officer over many years, but also a close friend of the boss for even longer. He once said with a smile, makes you sick, doesn't it? Bird is one of those annoying people. In whatever he chooses to do, he always, he's always been able to do it and do it to the highest level. And really, you couldn't argue with that. In the late 80s, Birdie was actually a professional footballer playing in goal for Berry Football Club. He was also racing motocross at Grand Prix level before becoming three-time supermoto champion of Northern Ireland. He, he, he once joked, had I stayed with football, I could have been earning millions. But I chose motorbikes, so now it's costing me millions. After motocross, his quest for speed turned to four wheels, where typically he again excelled, becoming four-time Malcolm Wilson Rally Champion, twice winner of the Rally of Barbados and national champion in 2005. So it came as no surprise that his son Frank Jr. has gone on to race cars successfully. The Birdman was also a qualified helicopter pilot. But it's as owner of Paul Byrne Motorsport that he would be best remembered. The team was inaugurated in 1994, although it wasn't until 1999 that PBM enjoyed its maiden success. They won both the 250 British Championship and the Isle of Man Lightweight TT with the 250 Vimto Honda carrying plate number four, which is before us here. The rider was a relative unknown by the name of John McGuinness. It was the start of a lifelong friendship between the two. For the 2000 season, Paul had signed James Toseland to debut in the British Superbike Championship. Unfortunately, JT was sidelined mid-season with a broken femur. Earlier that year, though, Paul had provided the Vimto VTR SB1 Honda for the most successful TT racer ever, Joey Dunlop, to win what was to be his very last Superbike race over the mountain course. 
Bird is new super rider for 2001 on board the Monster Mob Ducati was Steve Hislop. However, following a season-long battle, he had to give best to John Reynolds. 12, month, 12 months later, and Hizzy secured PBM's maiden British Superbike Championship, whilst the Birdsman's second rider, we, Stuart Easton, made it a unique double by adding the British Supersport Championship. PBM are the only team to have ever achieved this double in the history of British Superbikes. For many, though, myself included, the most memorable happening of that 2002 season was when, during qualifying for the BSB round at Donington Park, Steve Hislop recorded the fastest ever two-wheel lap of the Leicestershire circuit by bettering the previous best, as set just 12 months earlier in MotoGP qualifying by a certain Valentino Rossi, and he was on the factory Honda RC5. It's a feat still talked about by race fans to this day. 2003, and there was a new kid on the block, Shane Byrne, who became Birdie's chosen jockey, and he didn't disappoint, winning with ease his first and PBM's second Superbike title. The Bird Byrne duo would go on to win a further four British Superbike crowns together in 2012, 14, 16, and 17, taking the PBM team tally to a then record breaking total of six. As an aside, the boss man gained a wildcard entry for Shaky to ride at the 2003 World Superbike meeting at Brands Hatch. Birdie was seen to raise a knowing and contented smile that weekend when his team put it over the world stars to record historic double race wins. It was incidentally the very first time Shaky had carried race number 67, the number he thereafter made his own. During the 2009 to 2011 seasons, Paul managed Kawasaki, uh, Kawasaki's official World Superbike team effort with Tom Sykes taking victory at the Nuremberg Ring to give the Japanese manufacturers their first win in some five years. But with the introduction of the new CRT regulations, the boss would move his attentions to MotoGP for 2012 with fellow Cumbrian James Ellison riding an Aprilia ART bike. Paul remained in MotoGP for 2013 with riders Yoni Hernandez and Brock Parks on ART machines, whilst Michael Laverty also rode the team's own built PBM bike. Birdie's endeavours did much of the early groundwork for Aprilia's subsequent full factory MotoGP return that is today so successful. For 2019, Paul gambled on former MotoGP runner Scott Redding doing the biz. And despite a pre-season scare when Scott sustained a broken thigh after crashing a pit bike in Spain, he more than lived up to his pre-season billing to present the boss man with British Superbike title number seven with Aussie Josh Brooks making it a 1-2 for PBM. And with Reading off to World Superbikes, Brooksy claimed PBM Superbike title number eight in the shortened COVID-restricted 2000 season. 2021 and 22 were to prove disappointing in the, street, in the extreme for poor Bird. So determined that he would get his PBM team back to winning ways this year, the boss was quick to sign up proven Ducati riders, Tommy Bridewell and Glenn Irwin. The results have thus far shown that his selection and judgment was spot on, and it was a real joy to see that the long Miss Smile had returned to the boss's face. This is what Tommy Bridewell said just after he'd done the double at Bransach in July. I'm so privileged to say I ride for the Paul Bird Metasport team. Before continuing, I stopped by Paul in the pit lane, looked up at him and said, boss, thank you for this amazing team. He had tears in his eyes as he replied, Tommy, I effing love you. Glenn would certainly have received the same glowing words from Birdie after his double at the last round at Cadwell Park. Sadly, though, the boss was not to be there. He was in hospital. And where, just a few days later, Paul Bird was to lose his battle for life. Upon hearing a pause passing, Glenn messaged, people talk about Paul's racing budget, but let me tell you, money isn't what makes Paul Bird Motorsport special. It's the unrivaled willingness to win that Birdie has always displayed and which filtered down through the team. Paul's passion always rose to the top. I owe you so much for what I've achieved in my career, the biggest achievement being rejoining you and your team for this season. To win races this year and to see you with a tear in your eye was, oddly, a beautiful feeling. To give you moments of true happiness despite facing your own battles. 
Each of us uh, will all have our own personal memories of Paul that we will treasure in the months and years ahead. Mine will be the reply to the final text I sent on the Friday at Cadwell Park. I tailed my message by saying, stay positive, boss, and concentrate on getting better. The paddock just ain't the same without you. We're all thinking of you, buddy. His reply, thank you. Thank you, Fred, complete with a red heart emoji. As the boss would have wanted, the show goes on, and with Tommy and Glenn holding first and second in the championship, it's going to be an emotional climax to the championship. History has shown that nothing is certain in British Superbikes, but with just these final three rounds to go, it will not just be Tommy and Glenn who will be giving their all and more to bring home that unprecedented ninth British Superbike Championship for the boss man, but so too will every single member of the Poor Bird Motorsport team. We wish them good luck and good fortune for a fitting outcome. Friends, Paul Bird is now gone. Our sport, sport, our sport is the poorer for his passing. We will never see his like again, but let's rejoice in both the remarkable man that he was and what he achieved during his action-packed but all too short life. At this stage, ladies and gentlemen, I made reference to Larry Carter, his very close friend and, of course, press officer for the team. I'm going to hand this over to Larry for the final few words. Thank you, Fred. Uh, wonderful tribute there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please join us in a minute's reflection for the life of Paul Bird. Godspeed, mate, till we meet again. Thank you. <laughs>